you're watching Fridays here at Backyard Tech. All right. Well, we're going to wind the clock back twice here at Backyard Tech. The first wind back is a couple of months ago, and the second wind back is because of the age of this laptop. All right. So a couple of months ago, if you remember, I picked up a Toshiba Satellite P750 Entertainment laptop. Well, after mucking around with it for the last week and a half, I finally decided what I'm going to use it for. And part of the reason we're calling this a retro tech video is based on the age of this laptop and the operating system that it's running. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. You are watching Fridays here at Backyard Tech. It is retro tech time, and as I said, the reason behind this is because of the age of this laptop. Okay. So it's a, as we know, it's a Toshiba P750 satellite, a pretty damn good Toshiba laptop, if you ask me. But it is an entertainment laptop. And the reason behind that is, is because it has a H.264 DVB-T tuner card built in, which is fantastic. Unfortunately, though, the operating system is retro. However, because of what I want to use this laptop for, its existing operating system, as far as I'm concerned, suffices. Now, being a Debian person, I've tried Debian, I've tried offshoots of Debian, and I've run into a number of problems, especially with the Dolby sound system in it, as well as the tuner card that's in it. Now, the default position for most people is that I should code or create my own driver pack for it. I'm not into that sort of stuff. I don't know how many times I've got to say it. So... That was with Debian. As far as OpenMan Driver is concerned, I had all sorts of problems with it. So, in saying all that, what I've decided to do is leave it with its existing operating system on there. Because frankly, for what it's gonna be used for with regards to the 80 series, and anything else I wanna do, it will suffice. Let's have a look at what I've decided to set up that Toshiba P750 satellite as. All right, so this is it. This is the Toshiba P750 satellite that my mate gave me from his computer business. Um, now, before we start it, as I said, I've had trouble with alternate operating systems with regard to this laptop. Specifically, one of the problems I had was obviously with the tuner card, all right? Remembering these are a H.264 DVB-T card in them, all right? but also the Dolby Audio. This has a licensed Dolby Audio chip in it. Okay. Having said all that, the operating system that's on this is what I am sticking with it. And the reason is, is because of what this is going to be used for. All right. So let me show you. I've got it set with panel open. Most of my laptops are set like that. Yes, it's Windows 7. Now, I know what's going to happen here. I know exactly what's going to happen here. Everyone's going to be howling on me because I won't do this to 10. And the reason I'm not doing it to 10 is because of WMC. Let me explain what this is going to be used for once it boots in. And I'll explain some of the problems I had with Debian and OpenMan Driver, which frankly, I couldn't be stuffed sorting out. All right. These, remember, these do have a licensed Dolby system in them. All right. These are not just run of the mill, you know, garbage sound systems. This thing's got full range Harman Kardon speakers in it which I've got to be honest with you, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen the video I put up of working on this laptop. And I've been working on this for about, probably about a week and a half now. I've been mucking around with this thing, trying to figure out how I want this to work. All right? Super clear sound for a laptop. I mean, this laptop, the reason it's so old is this has got the same proc that the Ace has got in it, a 2410M. So it's a pretty old laptop, but, 
Having said that, for what I want to use this beast for, I really actually don't give a stuff because this is going to be in the 80 series, right? Because what I'm going to do is, we're all familiar with these, right? Because let's face it, every tech head knows about them. Those um, portable USB powered DVB-T H264 receivable TV antennas for both VHF and UHF. Now I can get them, well I suppose if I know it, everyone knows it. U they can be USB powered if you're in a weak area, right? Or they can just run normally if you're in a TV, a, a strong UHF, VHF area. That's what this is gonna be used for. For example, if I'm working on the 80 series somewhere and sports on, um, I can watch it on this laptop. All right, it's minimally installed, but I have put Komodo on it, all right? And the sound that this thing has is off the charts. All right, now I have to give, I'm not a massive fan of Toshiba, but I have to give some credit to them for their audio system on this laptop. For starters, the Dolby Advanced sound system this thing runs is one of the best laptop sound systems I've heard in a while and beats all my laptops. None of my Acer laptops have got audio anywhere near as good as this laptop from a laptop audio point of view, okay? Secondly, the, so that, the, from, from the HK scenario, the Harbin Carden speakers this thing runs, the fact that it runs a licensed Dolby sound system in it as well, which will also send Dolby out through the HDMI port, is phenomenal. And that is why I am sticking with Windows, Pre Windows Home Premium. Mainly also because of, wherever I've put it, there it is. All right. This thing does only run four gig. Um, and unfortunately I don't have any other RAM to put in this of higher capacity. Um, but you'll hear the audio now. I oh know the video camera is not going to do it much justice, but those of you like myself who are familiar with HK systems and um, DAA will know how good they sound. So WMC is set up for TV, okay, and you know, if I'm up in Bendigo, I can just retune it to regional Victorian television, which is fine. Um, but this is going to be in the 80 series, so that if I am working on the 80 series or I'm somewhere where I need to get something very quickly, I can hotspot this and go for broke, uh, which is why I'm leaving Windows Home Premium. What I did do was pull out the hard drive that's in this and put Windows 10 on it. It struggled. Okay, it did struggle with Windows 10 on 4 gig of RAM. And as I said, I don't have any other large capacity pieces of RAM for the... I know, we're talking about IT stuff and we shouldn't be here at Backyard Tech because, well, we're moving away from it. Um, if you haven't worked that out already. And that's based on advice. Um, so that's what I'm going to use this laptop for, is purely watching TV when I'm out somewhere. Um, and also I'm going to put WaveLab on it as well. I have my reasons why I want to run WaveLab on this laptop. So that's what this laptop's going to be used for. All right, basically TV and other few bits and pieces relative or with reference, I should say, to the 80 series. Um, but one thing I have got, I've got Komodo running panic mode. All right, and there's a reason because it's Windows 7, I want Komodo running in panic mode um, and Firefox. And that's basically all that's on this laptop. Okay, uh, the Toshiba driver for the DVB-T card, the Dolby driver for the chip, and that's it. That's all that's running. Um, the sound system's real tech over the top of the... Uh, no, hang on a minute, that's not right. Wait a minute. Let's rip up my audio qualification. There we go. The Realtek audio system has the Dolby chip on board, I should say. That's what I meant to say. So 
I had real trouble with Debian on this for multiple reasons and Open Man Driver was a disaster. Uh, Open Man Driver wouldn't see any of those. Oh, they're my function keys and that. Debian would see the function keys but couldn't do them and frankly I couldn't be stuffed trying to configure it all because well it's IT stuff and frankly if I can't get it to configure the first time I'm not going to bother. So that's what I'm going to use this for and, and it works really well. I haven't got an antenna here um, but it works really really well and I'm, I can actually show you that I do have the TV system set up we go back into WMC and if I go into uh, guide you can see there I've got it all set up um, it's a bit out of date at the moment but everything's there so I, what I did was set this up on my main aerial here at home but I am going to get one of those as I said those USB powered DVB-T264 systems um, fairly common. Uh, I know, I, I know a fair bit about how they work with their, especially with their built-in power amp, which comes off the USB system. Um, I think the last time I bought one of those was actually for a friend some four years ago now. Um, the one I got was the flat panel one. All right. Now the what the flat panel one is is basically that. It's a box about yay hot or about yay wide by about yay high. So it's about three inches across, inch and a half deep and two inches high. The one I'm looking at though getting does have the added advantage of the two rabbit ears as well, but the primary receiver is the panel, all right? So, and as I said, you know, if you're in a weakened area regarding UHF and VHF, you can plug them into a USB port on your laptop or your PC or whatever, and it'll act as a power amp rather than a passive FM trap. Okay, because remember with a passive trap, it basically buffers the signal up. Okay, it's like a um, high, high impedance buffer. Whereas an active amp actually has a signal booster built into it. It's like the um, uh, power amps you run on your TV aerial. Halfway up the masthead, you've got the phantom power system that helps boost the TV signal, especially if you're in a weakened area where you can get the signal but it's not strong enough to register and you end up with digital um, pixelation on your TV signal. So that's what I'm going to use this laptop for. There we go. That's it for the day here at Backyard Tech. Have a good one.